What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear five hour work plans drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, leader. Today's guest is a longstanding client and a member of the Leadership Lab. She can always be counted on to keep it real, make us laugh, and share some incredible stories and insight. She's an experienced dual business owner who lives a very full life, running a home, caring for two kids, hiring for two teams, maintaining her fitness goals, supporting her husband, who is a lead asset in the second business, and then, of course, finding some time to chill with a good book. So how does she do it, and what can we learn from her? You know, it's a fact. Women are doing too much. Burnout is real, and we need to use our voices more often. We just don't talk enough about the challenges that women face every day, trying to do it all. Well, today you'll hear from this CEO who's not afraid to voice her preferences, figure out what works, and then adopt that approach to make her life easier, not more complex, even as both of her businesses grow. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. If you are a service-based business owner who's wanting to elevate your capabilities to lead your team, you're in the right place. Clients tell me all the time that it's hard to find trainings and insight that fits them. That small business owner who's great at what she does, but never really had any training on the people side of running her business. That's exactly why Stacking Your Team was launched over three years ago as a companion resource to the award-winning Biz Chicks podcast, hosted by Natalie Ekdahl, our CEO and founder, who has been sharing her incredible free podcast resource for women entrepreneurs since 2014. Natalie and I both have a big heart for service-based business owners who are juggling life at home, in their community, their industry, and of course, in their business. We want to walk alongside you on that path towards profitability, impact, and harmony in such a way that you remain true to you. I'm your host, Shelley Warren, your team and leadership coach here at BizChicks Inc., where I lean on my 25 plus years experience leading people at a Fortune 50 corporation. I'm here to help you by taking those complex corporate concepts and stripping them down into what better fits you, that small business owner who wants to learn all the things about leading high-performing teams, being adored by her clients who will stick with you for years, and winning every day at Operational Excellence. Thank you for joining me, and as we come together today, as usual, when I mention an episode or a person or any little thing, you can always find the links in the show notes. And for our longstanding listeners, you know I can't start an episode without reminding you that the team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. Mary Spellman leads a large team of insurance and financial service experts for a Fortune 50 corporation and leads Brady Construction alongside her husband, Bernard. Together, they parent Zell, who is eight, and Patrick, who is six, and they are a self-proclaimed traveling family. They enjoy exploring new places and new cultures alongside their roots. Bernard's family hails from Ireland and Mary's hails from Thailand. Her insurance and financial services team is now a hybrid mix of in-person and remote people who love to educate their clients and have fun doing it. She says, we want to leave you a little bit smarter, no matter what your significant other says, 
and a little more upbeat. We can speak to you in English, Spanish, Italian, Cantonese, and Pig Latin. We've combined over 45 years of service experiences here. We probably won't be able to beat you in an arm wrestling, but we sure can commit to holding your hand through the insurance and financial services process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how Mary and her team rolls every day. They're celebrating 14 years serving the San Francisco Bay Area and beyond. At Brady Construction, they're breaking ground and blowing minds with their incredible work on luxury homes in the Bay Area. I've included their Instagram link so you can see for yourself. Totally Dorini. Not only are they accomplished in construction on precarious hillsides, but they're also known far and wide for their concrete work. Mary is a great example of a woman who leads and lives a dual income, dual entrepreneurial marriage and a home with all the challenges that come along with that. She's here today to uncover some truths, some tips, and some practical solutions to keeping it real and keeping the momentum going. And she's giving you permission to do the same. Let's chat with Mary. Welcome to the Stack of Your Team podcast, Mary. Hello. Thanks for having me. I've been wanting to have you on the podcast for so long, and you finally said yes, and you finally booked a time with me, so I'm excited to be able to share your story with our listeners because I find you're one of those women who, well, first of all, you and I just clicked from the minute we met, and we've had a chance to meet in person, and that's always lovely, but the thing I find about you is you're one of those entrepreneurs that it's kind of like a best kept secret. Like I find that you have a lot going on in your life and in your businesses. There's a lot that we could learn from you and more people just need to know about who it is and what you do and how you're making an impact for your family. And then of course your Bay area where you're located. So tell our listeners a little bit more about you. So my name is Mary Zell Spellman. And I live in San Francisco, originally from Chicago. I feel the need to tell people that so they understand that I know what it's like to be from a cold area and then move to a cold area in the summer. I have two children and a husband and loving and living life, singing a song in my head almost 24 hours a day. Well, I think part of the reason why when I think about you that I think about why it is that you're always so energized is because you do a lot of things to really pour into yourself. So you are a fitness fanatic, you are a food fanatic, and you also are a family fanatic. And you love to really pour into your family through travel and really deep connections. So where is one of the your most favorite places in the world that you visited? Well, all those things I can do because I've given myself the freedom to do it and the permission. So that took a long time. That took about six years of running a business to be able to give myself permission. And I think the birth of my daughter and then my children allowed me to do those things. We just got back from a cruise in the Mediterranean and in Ireland. I know with you know, whatever's happening pandemically throughout the world, I just figured it would be a good time. And it's been right. My kid's favorite vacation was Hawaii. We went to Hawaii for December because they were doing the online school. So that was their favorite. My favorite was Mykonos this summer. No one was there during the day. I think they might've been there at night. But during the day, it was just a great, I felt recharged and energized and had quiet time with the kids. And we just ate amazing food and just got to no Wi-Fi. So got to have undivided time with each other. And it was amazing. Well, it's wonderful that you have the means to do this. You have the desire to do this. And like you said earlier, you gave yourself the freedom and the permission to do this. Because I think a lot of families, especially dual income families, where both of the partners are entrepreneurs, they can tell themselves a story that says only one of you 
has the permission to have more freedom in your life, or I'm going to be the primary hustler. I'm going to be the primary buckle down and build our financial fortress. And then when we get this financial fortress, then we'll start doing all these things that we always want to do as, as a family. So what was the tipping point for you? It was the birth of my children. It was, I mean, I was in labor, still firing off text messages on my BlackBerry at the time. And they were like, are you in labor? And I was like, yeah, I'm in labor and I'm still, and then you have a child and your life changes, right? Everyone says that, but I had to rethink everything. And I tried to hire a nanny and the nannies didn't show up on their first day or they didn't want to work the hours that I had. So I had to find it. I found a daycare and it was actually a blessing because she's only open four days a week. So I had to take Fridays off and taking that Friday off where I could have undivided time with my child was the best thing that ever happened to me because I had to relinquish some control and I could, you can't work with a child running around or with a baby. And so I got to have this undivided time and have my work day, four day, four week work day, essentially. So it kind of forced me to do it. And then once I did it, I realized, okay, I could do this, you know, but it was more, I was kind of pushed into it than giving myself the space to do it. And now that I have the space to do it, I know that I can do it because I've done it before, right? So your children, Zell is eight and Patrick is six. Yeah. What have you maintained through that. So that those epiphany moments that you had when you first gave birth to Zell and realized, oh, okay, I'm going to have this everyday Friday with her. I'm going to rearrange my work schedule. And then of course that spilled over when Patrick was born. What have you been able to maintain throughout that time? So I do not work on Fridays. I mean, I'm not working in the business, either businesses. I am working on myself. There's a lot of self-care that happens on Fridays. Fridays are days that you can do stuff at the school if you need to volunteer. I do Pilates on Fridays. I have therapy on Fridays. And I'll either have a drum beat for a facial, a massage, acupuncture, some type of self-care for myself only during that time. And it is, don't come to me. Don't talk to me. Don't schedule anything during that time. This is my self time to reset and recharge and giving myself the permission and not having the guilt of that was something that I dealt with. And then you get over it, especially when you're in like pure bliss for three hours of undivided me time. Well, it really becomes sacred time. And then your family starts to see how you are reacting on Friday evenings and on even Thursday evenings, because they know that you're looking forward to the next day. And then of course on Friday night, you're so rejuvenated and relaxed and just re-energized that they feel the shift too. And that's a way to really slide into the weekend, which typically is family time. And so when you have the energy to be able to slide into a weekend, it just makes the whole experience wonderful for everyone. It's exactly true. And I took my email off my phone. So it's actually family time. There are no, I mean, I'm still getting text messages and phone calls, but only for really important stuff. And they always know that I'm accessible, but I am, when I mean family time, I am 100% dedicated to whatever is happening during that family time. I mean, kids have activities. I mean, managing my personal calendar is insane, which actually I just have to tell you all that I don't do it. I actually hired someone to help me manage my personal calendar because I like to stay married and she, there can't be the fight of like, well, you didn't tell me that and I didn't know it. Well, you know what? I told Nancy and Nancy put it on both of her calendar. So, and she set a reminder. So it eliminates that fight completely. So I did outsource, like how many times do you walk into a kid's classroom and it's like, bring, you know, engineering supplies this Friday or make sure your kid's wearing a purple shirt or, you know, whatever it is. So I just snap pictures of it or forward emails to my amazing VA and she puts everything on the calendar with reminders and I live by my calendar. 
I'm like Ron Burgundy with a teleprompter where if you say, if I'm meant to be somewhere on my calendar, I will show up. If you forgot to take it off, I could be, you know, 45 minutes away at somebody's house. So I live by my calendar and she knows that. And my husband knows that. So everyone knows what's happening at the same time. There's no mismatched discussion. It pops up. I get a reminder the day before, and then I get a reminder an hour before everything. Wow. What a wonderful system. So it's that whole idea. If it's not on the calendar, it's not happening. And then of course, the other thing is, is it synchronizes the family because you're using that one calendar to really be the guide to make sure that people are in the right place at the right time. And they're focused on doing the right things. And I love the hour before the event prompts too, right? We do that in our work life all the time, but we don't often parlay that over into our home life too. So Nancy sounds like an incredible help to you at home. What other help do you have in your home life? So my zone of genius is I am super energized talking to people. I love meeting with clients. I love meeting with potential clients. I love meeting with potential contractors. I love all that stuff energizes me and I'm really good at it. What I'm not good at is the follow-up and the paperwork. I just can't sit still long enough to like focus on the attention to detail. So I have to hire people around me to do those things. But for home, I, you know, everyone is like, oh my God, what am I going to have for dinner? What am I going to do here? So I have a lovely lady named Paloma, whom I love and I'm obsessed with. And she knows that we send names to each other most of the time and we laugh. She's a trained chef and she comes into our home and cooks three meals a day. And then she does odds and ends, like sorts out the sack basket put stuff from Goodwill in her trunk instead of mine and I'll drive around with it for nine months. She Kanmari folds a basket of laundry. So she's doing like little bits and bobs or she'll like organize the Costco bean drawer, something, you know, things like that. And then, and it took me a while to allow myself to do that. Again, it's giving myself the permission to do that. And I have cleaners. Again, my husband is the cleanest person He likes a tidy house. He likes it very, he likes organized, clean house. And I am the absolute opposite. I am like, we'll come in, get the job done and leave everything around me. Instead of a marriage therapist, we have a cleaner, a team, and they come once a week. And then they, I don't even see them. It's like these people come in and like whisk my life away. And I come home to this beautiful, calm place that was like chaotic and crazy when I left. So that's my home help that I have. And I have a gardener because I like a pretty garden and my husband likes really green grass. So his thing is the grass. He hired the gardener, (laughs) but it takes a village, right? It does take a village, Murray, but the beauty in all of this is the feeling that you have when you pull up into your driveway after an extensive day leading two businesses and, you know, just the decision fatigue, the energy drain. And it's that whole idea for most women who work outside the home, whether they're, you know, working in corporate or whether they're an entrepreneur themselves, there's this second shift that starts the minute they pull into their driveway. And I mean, I was one of those women too. I used to sit in my driveway and give myself a little pep talk before I even got into the home because it's that whole idea of you can feel like you left it all on your desk and then where are you going and how are you going to rally up the energy and the enthusiasm and the proper attitude to pull into your driveway, walk into your home and begin your second shift where now you have this second team of people who all want you, love you, need something from you, hanging off your skirt. It's such a drain. And so the more that we can have help structure around us at home, we really can have the energy and it really can feel wonderful to pull into your driveway. So if there's every mom that's listening to this knows what it feels like to pull up and sit in the car just for five minutes to look at Instagram or read an email or do whatever. I am a minivan driving mother. I have taken naps in my minivan when needed. I, that minivan, man, she is like my BFF. She takes everyone around. (laughs) She's a champion workhorse. If walls could talk in that minivan. (laughs) 
And I, you know, grew up in an era where, you know, we listened to rap music. So I bump some rap music as soon as I drop the kids off, the ones with the swear words, and I'm bumping in my Honda Odyssey to some Tupac. It's amazing. Well, it's whatever it takes to get you back up to that state of mind where you need to be to either hit the ground running at the office or hit the ground running when you return to home. But it definitely is a significant challenge for the majority of working women to begin that second shift. So I love hearing how you've structured your help at home to really be able to help alleviate a lot of that stress. So tell us about your team that you're working with day in, day out at business number one. Tell us about those individuals. Sure. I have to come in to everything with a clear head, all my energy out, totally prepared. Like that's just my MO. I don't have to be prepared in the sense of like, I over prepared for something or overthinks overthink something. But I have a daily schedule that I live by daily. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share that. Sure. Let's hear it. So first off, I am a squirrel. I can go in a million different directions. I have a million ideas going through my head at all times, probably undiagnosed ADHD. I'm looking at you, Stephanie. And so in order to do that, I know I need a schedule. So I am an early riser. I know this isn't for everybody, but I get up at 4.30 in the morning. I write in a gratitude journal. I have some alone time. I then go to Orange Theory Fitness, I work out four days a week. I come home from working out. The kids are awake. My husband has started breakfast. We have breakfast together. And then it's, you know, running around, right? I'm just basically running around from dropping the kids off and then coming into the office. What that allows me to do is to burn off some of the energy in the morning and get my fitness in but also come prepared for the office that day. Again, my schedule, I have someone at the office who is in charge of my schedule and they know I live, breathe and eat my schedule every day. They like put in pee breaks sometimes in between appointments, but I am mentally prepared when I get here and my team knows I'm mentally prepared. I'm the type of person who claps my hand and I'm like, all right, what are we doing today? And I think my team appreciates that. And I appreciate that. So it's not like I'm when there's days that you're dragging around and you need that extra caffeine jolts, but I am totally prepared for the day by the time I get here. And my team is for Spelman Insurance and Financial Services. Almost everyone's remote, which thank you, Shelly, for helping with me with that years ago, especially in the Bay Area, the way that wages are there really expensive. The women I employ are absolutely stunning, amazing women who bring amazing things to my team and to the table. They are the lifeblood of my business. I love them all so very much and love the unique qualities that they all bring. They're the lifeblood. They're everything. And they all have different personalities and are super fun I love the idea that you understand what your preferences are, Mary. Like that's what I'm hearing as you're telling this story because I find too many women get into a leadership role, whether they're running their own business or they're a CFO or COO or CPO within a a small business, and they're unwilling to declare out loud what their preferences are. And therefore, they don't have ideal days, which mean they don't have ideal weeks, which means they don't have ideal months. But you've mastered this. You've been in business long enough to realize, well, first of all, you know who you are. You know what works for you. And so you are very confident to be able to say, this is how I like to set up my day. So it feels worthwhile to me from the minute I get up to the minute I come home. And that's what we're hearing here is really how you have piece together a life and a momentum that you're creating. And the fact that your team, you're purposely looking for people who can uphold that and who will want to work within those parameters and even enjoy working in those parameters because you're predictable and your preferences are so well known. They would call me predictable, but they would also call me super random. Which is so funny because we all did the Colby report to kind of get to know each other recently on a team retreat we did. And 
the Colby report says, you know, one of the questions is, is do people ask you why you're so random all the time? And the question, they, I have been asked that question my whole life. Like, you're so random. And I think that's why I have to have such a set schedule is because it gives people that know that I'm so random some form of predictability within my personality. <laughs> Well, and it kind of reins you in a bit as well. It keeps some structure, right? You've got some rhythm and routines and some structure there so that you can literally leave the day feeling like you nailed the day because you have so many ideas and so much energy to put towards all these new ideas and strategies that you have. But at the same time, if the team was to go and react on all of those ideas, then you would be disappointing them because it would be like a start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Oh, I've changed my mind, start, stop. And that can get really frustrating, especially for people who are remote team members because there's that sense of isolation there. So bravo to you for building out this team, also knowing your preferences, and then putting together those rhythm and routines to really help you be the very best leader that you can be day in, day out. Yeah. And it feels good. I feel like when a team knows that they have a strong leader who they can come to for whatever needs to come to, they are so much happier and everyone is in the same direction. The sense of predictability is always good, but they're, they know that I could change on a whim. Like, okay, we've tried this out. I've gotten your feedback. We're changing it tomorrow. And we're going to try this. And the longer I've been in business, the more I know to get like how long to do those things. And I think they appreciate that because I 100% listen to all their feedback. And you give it a good go, right? You give it a good go. You see that it's not helping move the business forward. So you're brave and bold enough to say, okay, time out. We gave this a good run. We're not getting the ROI on it that we had hoped. Let's pivot and try our next best step. And you're very confident to keep finding those next best steps so that you ultimately do end up finding the secret sauce and finding the right recipe. I mean, you haven't been in business as long as you have by jumping up and turning around and flipping things on its head every week. I mean, you're willing to do that sort of like mental gymnastics to be able to make the right decisions and find the sweet spot. But then once you find it, you stay there and then you just continue to refine that. And it's not without the proper feedback from a team, right? And I just tend to hire high energy people around me also. You know, most of us are talking at the same time, laughing hysterically, telling a joke. And, you know, I'm the one who's like, all right, let's calm it down. And it's usually I begin it and end it with singing. I don't know. We have a singing group of ladies. That's always fun. So what else are you doing with your team at Spellman Insurance, as well as Brady Concrete, to keep both of those businesses moving forward and moving towards your strategic goals without depleting all that high energy that you have. Because Mary, although you are a high energy person, you are human. And there will be times where you have drained all that mental capacity and physical capacity. And, you know, the universe will literally put you on your bum, and then you have to recover and refuel and come back at it. So how are you maintaining all this, looking after yourself, nurturing those two teams within two very different industries? That's my Fridays are 1000% the reason that I do those things, because I am wearing three different, you know, you're talking about going to your second job in the morning, I'm doing my first job. In the afternoon, I'm doing the second job. And then I come home and do the third job, which is the most important job, or maybe that's the first job, and then I'm coming in doing the second, whatever. I didn't have that downtime. I would be a cranky, angry human being. So it's 1000% pivoting like Ross and friends with the couch, but it's also putting on a different hat at any given time, sometimes it's exhausting. And I am 1000% an extrovert, but I am definitely an introvert and need that time to recharge. And that's what Fridays do for me. Hmm. Kids are at school, husband's at work, the cleaners aren't in the house. I have the house to myself. I just need, you know, not four hours is all I'm asking, right? And if I don't have it, you can see a huge shift in my mindset. Then you start resenting like, you know, I have to go into work. I have to do this. That sometimes the have to's, aren't as bad when you're doing all that self-care in the morning, whether before your kids wake up, before you go to bed for the night owls, or 
spending some time on a Friday morning or whatever day works for you. Right. I mean, men have been doing it for years, Shelly. It's called golf. Mm -hmm. I'm just not into golf. I'd rather get a massage. Yeah, it's true. It's just one of those patriarchal moments that women, it's almost like we just come to a point in our life where we realize enough is enough. And then we start declaring out loud what it is that we need for ourselves. So what would you say to those other women out there that are leading women-owned businesses? They have a full life, full family obligation, sometimes elder care, sometimes even extended family care. They have all their passions for travel and sports and fitness and all the other things that they want to do. What would you tell them? Like, what would be their number one thing to put into place now to help them feel more assured about being able to be that strong leader that both those businesses need them to be? So I would challenge every listener to just try it. Try it for one month where you have dedicated time to yourself. You literally put nothing on the calendar. This is different than working on your business. This is different than, you know, you have to be out of the office or out of your workspace. I challenge everyone to do it just for one month and just to see the change from everything. And there's no harm in just trying it, ladies. There's no harm in just trying it. It will make you a better mom. It will make you a better leader. It will make you a better wife, partner, whatever that is. But unless you try it, you won't be able to see the benefits. So I'm giving you permission to just try it. Don't feel the guilt and don't feel guilt about hiring out services within your zone of genius. Like I love to cook. That doesn't mean I should be doing it. I cook on the weekends. I love making stuff, but at you know, six o'clock on a Wednesday, I don't want to have to think about, oh my God, are we going to have frozen pizza again? Think I'm giving you permission. And I think all of us, I think Shelly also giving you permission to hire people within their zone of genius to do things. And so you can spend more time with your family or loved ones. Yeah, it's so true. For whatever reason, and there seems to be many reasons, women will tell themselves stories that they can't afford this. Their life partner won't agree to it. It's too exhausting to even train someone about my preferences and how I like things done. It'll cost me an arm and a leg. No one really wants to do this kind of work. I mean, there's all these stories that women will tell themselves. But as you said, just try it. Try one bit of help, either in the business or at home. And that can really be a springboard for you. Because once you get a taste of it, then you're really going to enjoy it. Your family's going to see the difference. And then you're going to want to do more for sure. If you put a monetary value on yourself, you'll realize that it's actually costing you more money to do those things. And it's mental energy along with monetary. So you got to just try it. Try it and see how it feels. And everybody, I think anyone that has done it realizes like you can't go back. You just can't (laughs) go back. I like live for my facials. You know, I live for the massage lady. I'm like, oh, it's massage week. I'm so excited. It's true. We got to keep pouring into ourselves. So Mary, how can people stay connected to you? So we love... I love Instagram. I just love looking at people's pictures. I would love if everyone could follow Brady Concrete Instagram and on LinkedIn for Spellman Insurance and Financial Services. Those are my two favorite platforms. Okay, well, we'll have those in the show notes. And thanks so much for coming and sharing your journey with us today. I love all the insight that you share as a member of the Leadership Lab. I can always count on you to ask the tough questions. And give some tough love insight too to the peers that are in that group. And essentially, that's a big reason why women are coming to the group anyways, is to be able to find those like-minded people that are going to give them permission and stretch them too. So thank you for always being ready to pour in to support your peers. Thank you for giving me the permission to do the things that we just talked about. I just want to say that. And thank you to the Leadership Lab ladies for always, always coming with your A game. You're amazing. Thank you, Mary. Thanks. So here's the thing. Did you catch the running theme throughout Mary's story today? Mm Mm-hmm. Scheduling. Her zone of genius is interacting with people, and she's a nine quick start. 
She's high energy and she's learned over the years how to schedule her life and her obligations so that she can be her best self. That's why her uninterrupted me time every Friday is a key strategy that she swears by for her well-being. Now, you know I'm a fan of those full Fridays. She also has hired support to assist her at home because outsourcing is another strategy that she's leaned hard into. Those supports keep her home and family running smooth and helping her shift her focus over into her family more easily because the details are taken care of. That includes having a home chef, which by the way is becoming a trend for the members of the Leadership Lab. I love seeing them invest in this time-saving and energy-saving support system. And her state of mind is something she's keenly aware of, so her routines help her to keep her as optimized as possible. She's not afraid to host tough conversations, both at home and in the business, and she knows her preferences, and she's open to giving and getting feedback. You know, she knows I am too, so she regularly shares her thoughts with me about the Leadership Lab and, well, life in general. She loves the workbooks that we create here in our programs at BizChicks, and she loves them even more because they can easily be loaded up into her Remarkable 2 device. She's convinced many of us to get our hands on our own Remarkable. It's created a bit of a ripple effect, for sure. So what will you do today to apply what you just learned here on the podcast about schedules, drum beats, and how they can be your best friend as you navigate the everyday activities in your very full life? Well, here's a suggestion. As Mary said, just try it. Give it a go and see how scheduling activities to match your preferences to truly optimize your personality and zone of genius can impact how you feel. And we're both encouraging you today to join the Flow Friday Club and make that day whatever you choose it to be, whether it's self-care, a friendship day, a read a book while you're in your pajamas day, a country drive day, therapy day, or a glam day. It doesn't really matter as long as it pulls you out of the business and away from your family. So when you decide to take that day for yourself, you'll be amazed at the ideas, clarity, and the newfound energy you're going to have. And with that, you will feel better, which will always impact your performance. Your physical strength and your mental strength will improve, leading to sound decision-making, more ease and flow, and more action that will lead to making more money. So go ahead and try it. And while you're at it, consider unapologetically outsourcing more tasks by downloading our free resource, Outsourcing at Home and at Work. Start small or start big, but just get started because you will soon see that shift in freeing up more time for you to make choices in what you'll focus on for the day or the week, truly maximizing your genius. And by the way, you'll be offering a great job opportunity to someone else. So get yours at the website at www.bizchicks.com slash outsourcing, or just click the link in the show notes. And if you'd like to find like-minded women who are taking deliberate action to also be surrounded by other leaders so they can up-level their leadership skills collectively, consider joining us in the Leadership Lab. Early enrollment starts right now, providing you foundational trainings, resources, and much more so that you can get some immediate help and then ease into the holiday season, ready to join the group in January. Our waitlist continues to grow. So if you've always wanted to join the Leadership Lab, enroll early and get on track for an experience like no other for both you and your team. You can apply at bizchicks.com slash leadership lab. Of course, the link's in the show notes. And remember, we spell chicks here with an X. I personally read every application and I personally circle back with everyone who applies. So I can't wait to learn more about you. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today. Oh,